Hello everyone, long time no see. How are you doing? Today we're gonna break down the ice compositing comp, which is a little bit more complex than the part of ice compositing I've shown you in the close-up of the signboards inside Nuke, because it will be more close. It was really hard to animate them. So I just wanna to talk what it takes to make this ice from this diets. So first you need to clean up the diets, right? So that's what I did here. I'm always putting the source denoised footage into the separate layer so that I can uh, take it out in any place of the script without drawing the arrow to the very top of my script. So this script is not entirely mine. We've done it together with Alek Zvekensov because he did the particles in uh, this scene. So my background, which I've uh, promised to talk about, will be uh, fully breakdown in another class. This is not the best shot to break down it as it is very close here and blurred. So uh, it comes like a source here, but uh, for the eyes I use the grained uh, source, which is this one. Yeah, so uh, I wasn't supervising this, but if I were, then I definitely would not use a blue screen here, because they wanted to light the character with blue light, and as they did this in front of the blue screen, it was very hard to key him out. Especially this blur, see how shitty it looks like at the very end. Because at the very end, the things look shitty because you supervised them wrong. Another thing you could do here, if I were me, when I was doing this, well, I mean, with my experience now, I'd take a mask, make a ramp and blur this weapon more strongly. I think I've already done this, but I can't see like Volker here and this is the reason why it looks strange. Yeah, anyways, talking about the eyes, just so much interesting stuff here beside the eyes. All right, so first, um, what I'm doing here, keying them out, this diets that were initially there on the glasses. The task is to replace them with the eyes inside of the eyes, because in the first version, when we've released the teaser of uh, our project, we replaced the eyes on the actual glasses to, uh, you know, After Effects animation, but this was like strange to have, uh, you know, that's put on, on the glasses or at least they were looking incorrectly on the glasses and we decided to put them behind the glasses as the eyes of the cyborg. I'm taking the alpha of these diets here and looks like I'm using them to put them inside there. So I'm stabilizing them here. See, stabilized by this dot. So just a point tracker does this because his head moves, of course, and we need to stabilize it before we can use it. So I do this here. And then I have a little bit of uh, distortion. So uh, static distortion that just distorts them. And then I have the transformation. Yeah, that's, that's just the animation of them. They are rotating into one direction like that. So just have the animation of rotations rotating. Simple as this, putting something under them. This is this After Effects animation I was talking about. This is not only After Effects animation, I've changed it a lot. So this is how it looks like. Pretty, 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 pretty. That's how it is in English, I guess. And then I'm like transforming them, sorting them, just putting them under themselves like that, making them a little bit different. So uh, this distortion is needed to create some lighting around uh, his eyes. You see at the final result, there is some like lighting around his eyes. So j just all this uh, distortion there is blurred strongly and added on top of his skin there. It is not actually his skin. I will show you how it is done because there is like no skin visible there. I had to recreate it there with the eyes. So uh, putting uh, this animation under doesn't change much, I guess. Well, it changes a little. Okay. And then I have this animation I've done. So uh, this is uh, 
like the correction for the depth of them and this was really hard you see how different this both eyes are uh this animation of them i've just done the animation by hand and as i said to you in the last class when you are doing such things if you are a little bit off it already looks like a hypnotoad because you know eyes are moving in the different directions <laughs> yeah so yeah and, uh, the cleanup is done by uh, constraining this corner pins to the same track or i've used for the eyes we just need to transformation for the rotor panes that you can use for each clone so you like select the layer or clones let's see yeah in the layer you can link this transformation here in the transform tab so uh, and then you get this clean up of them so just a couple of clones there and the old eyes are gone just with normal blending mode then we go further and we get this uh light thing on his skin i was talking about pretty hard stuff you take his photograph you grade it and transform it to something that will be properly positioned on the UV map of the geometry you will be using for geo tracking his hat. This is why it will work in all the shots where his hat is not only like frontal moving. So I could do this with Mocha or with transforms, but I uh, always think what. I will need in other shots in all the scenes because there's a lot of shots not only this one and we will have to track it with the geo tracker I have an old version of geo tracker here I, so I can show you how it was done let's take the geometry the camera and the background they uh, released a tool called face builder and face tracker which is more suitable for such situations but you know geo tracker always works why not to use it here as well you place his head and you track it let's see if i can place it properly so let's turn on the estimation of the focal length you can uh, unconnect the camera and turn on the custom constant focal length and then we can estimate the focal length and this will help us position him so let's turn his head here yeah so just approximately will be enough you just need the 3d animation from the geo tracker uh, doesn't have to exactly match but the better you do this the better will be the track of course another thing you can do is the brush um uh, brush with this poly brush the areas that you don't want to track you can make it bigger area here a very handy tool i've done a whole fx phd course about it it's like very good for those who want to learn uh, geo tracking before i've done this i've watched like all the boring streams so from Anbilov, who was talking there for six hours in Russian before he done this in English and understood everything, uh, like written down everything to a notebook and then learned everything and done this FX PhD course. So I, I've done like everything you can do in with uh, geo tracking note there. So you're welcome to watch. Here we will just make it fast so this was on the frame 72 all right let's put a keyframe here like that make an analyze file and the extension is pre calc so i need to put it in front of my file somehow like that let's analyze it so so now we are computing the optical flow for geo tracker it has its own uh, motion vectors to track things after you've done this you can track even without the connected background even if you will unconnect the background it will still able to track the <laughs> empty darkness because it doesn't use the background you've connected to it it used the pre code just a tip for use so you see this this is just the way you can track things fast and you so now i've just done something like that and in the place where it jumped i just took the transform and moved it uh, moved the eyes because i don't need very strong precision here i may even uh cover this uh, years here which make it shift because of the focal length estimation and after getting the transformation of the geometry here 
So I, th I guess it is a little bit more accurate here because I've done this while concentrating on work. I've placed this eyes there with just a transformation until they match on the UV map the place of his eye. And then I've just plussed them on top without rotoscoping on keying out these glasses here. I've just plussed them on top because this is like the bright parts and if you plus them it just looks fine behind this black glasses. I just made sure that they don't overlap this um, frame of them to look like they are behind the glasses. And then I've put in this uh, eyes there I was talking about behind them so uh, they are masked uh, here with uh, this uh, same alpha of eyes yeah I'm using also the mask for this frame of glasses to not intersect it here and that's how I've done this the, the most hard thing as I th said was this hypnotoad animation this was literally hard to uh, catch all this movement of uh, his eyes this micro movement if you you will uh, look exactly what he does here it wasn't uh, like my intent to match exactly his eyes but I wanted to like uh, give him some life and move his eyes a little bit like real humans do when they rotate their head you know when you rotate your head you're not always focused on nothing you are like focusing on some things which you see right now and that's because you have to like make a little bit animation for the eyes this is the reason why i did this and as we are still in the script let's briefly break down what else was done here so this is the digits that we put on uh, the weapon like that strongly blurred but in uh, different uh, shots they are visible so that's why in every shot they had to be here already and then we are starting to put together the particles all right this is the embers what is this looks like they are disabled here and this is was like yeah a little bit of embers on him after he appeared in the alleyway as a terminator he was like very hot and this is like the uh, stuff that was left on him i think that on the very first frame maybe it is a little bit stronger but because it is still there and there are some particles flying from it and I guess this is done by particle emitter in Nuke. Very interesting. Great work, Alec Zvagintsev. Great work. Then we get the fire sparks footages and then we have another footages with sparks and this is where the 3d particles come in so this is mostly the fax footage is blurred and then we get this a little bit of this 3d particles here blurred because on such close up with the snow need for fax footages i guess yeah that's how it is done thank you very much for watching project files to follow along with me are on my patreon as always by subscribing you are getting all the project files for all the videos i've done and for all the videos i will do in the future and i think we are forming kind of a warm community there you know you always can talk to me and ask stuff and cg and thank you so much for your support and sorry me for pronouncing your name wrong now trunk again again ha this is justin his name is justin he sent me this nd lee yoshiro sano and tv this is his short name so they are all visual effects soldiers and justin is industry pathfinder i talk to him much because he needs help constructing his show reel i'm pretty experienced at it thank you all for your support on patreon and here you go another cool project files for you my name is Kirill Pleshakov. Don't forget to share my content with your friends. This will really help because I was kind of doing too complicated videos lately and nobody is watching them because everyone wants something simple. So if you know somebody who likes complicated stuff, throw my videos to him. He will like them. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next class. Goodbye.